Welcome back to DPS HQ. I'm Sabotage. Guys, this is the Fireball Sorcerer that we promised you. Uh, Fireball Meteor Mix. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description so you can actually see the build if you don't wanna if you wanna skip the gameplay. But I'm gonna run in here and uh, we're gonna do a 100 volt. This thing will do 100 volts, 100 dungeons. Uh, it does bosses, does uber bosses. We'll get through Jurial. We'll get through Lilith. We'll get through Gregor, Beast in the Ice, all of them. Obviously not like a one hit bar, but she does some good work. Uh, rotation is that we are going to throw out our ice blades and then we are going to throw out our lightning spear and we are just going to go in fireball drop some meteors remember what I saw what I showed you at the start here this is a tier 100 volt and we are just blasting through this like it's absolutely nothing you're gonna throw down some meteors when your ice blades are on cooldown throw them back out. I'm going to try and skip a couple of these shrines so you can see the build for its pureness. And we're not going to run the dungeon all the way through. This is just to show you a little bit of how it works and how strong it actually is. You'll also notice when we go through the Paragon board that I don't have everything at 21 yet. I've got most of them, but not everything. So Ice Blade, Lightning Spear, Hit it, jump in with the elites, throw down your meteors, and you've got barrier because of protection constantly. This thing just absolutely slaps. It is a brilliant, brilliant thing to use. It's so much fun watching everything just get wiped out over the entire screen by meteors dropping from the sky. Uh, the fireball throws the meteor enchantment out, so we get more and more meteors. Your lightning spear, as you can see, stuns everything in the room ahead. You can occasionally get lucky, and the lightning spear can actually pop a meteor here and there. Um, but this is what it is. This is what it is. Absolutely brilliant and fun to play. Let's clear one more room and go through. And then what we're going to do is I'll take you through all the gear, all the skills, everything. Um, and again, like usual guys, you know you've seen my videos before, I play extremely aggressive, I play extremely dangerously, um, and we're still surviving, we're still able to just wipe things off the screen like they're nothing. The fireball itself is really strong, warmth is giving us healing, Seneschal is giving us resource, this is an absolutely gonna build, so let's just jump out now. You've seen how it works in the gameplay. You've seen the rotation. Let's go through some of the gear. Um, I wanna be very, very upfront about this at first. So I'm going to just jump in here and I'm going to grab the usual amulet that I use because I got very, very lucky, very lucky and found a melted heart, which works out great because we get resource. It helps us be a bit more tanky. It helps us run a bit faster. We've got resource gen and the damage while healthy is brilliant, but that's only happened today, yesterday, this is the one I was using beforehand with Meteor and Fireball getting 54x uh, critical strike damage with some Devouring Blaze, some extra damage, some intelligence and some movement speed after killing elites. Essentially, I would like that intelligence to be movement speed. You can throw that on and that will work just as well. Uh, and I've made a couple of small little changes to this build. So when you, uh, I'm gonna be updating the link uh, online. I don't think we've put it up as yet, but if it is up there, I'm gonna be updating it online. So yes, there will be a couple of small changes, but this video will match the exact link when it comes out because this is the way I found to play and it is phenomenal. <clears throat> Number one, we're gonna start with Starfall Coronet. Obviously we're doing Meteors. Find as low a cooldown as you can. Find as high a lucky hit chance as you can. Don't worry about the rest so much. You want the low cooldown because when Ice Blaze goes out and gives you the cooldown, you'll notice that Meteors are coming out every couple of seconds. And the reason for that is if I go to Meteor here, you'll see my cooldown is four seconds with the Ice Blades running through and doing things and causing the cooldown to come down, it comes down to about three seconds and you can then just spam out those meteors as a backup to everything. It also helps with elites, with bosses, and with things like Uber Jurial, because those meteors just annihilate. Now, secondly, this is our only defensive aspect and piece of gear that we use as something that is not legendary. 
all I've got on here is percentage armor, a whole bunch of damage reduction, and then juggernauts with a 5,000 for armor on there. And when we're in the dungeon, we are armor capped. So you're going to see I'm at 7,599 at the moment. If we just jump back into the dungeon quickly so I can show you, I just want to be able to show you guys that this is exactly how it works. I love going through the entire build so you can see it all. Um, we are at 14,641. We're over the armor cap, so armor cap, we're fine. Um, now jumping back out so I don't get attacked. <clears throat> Let's go through and finish up the gear. <clears throat> now, uh, Gloves of the Illuminator is the next thing because obviously Gloves of the Illuminator, you get the bouncy fireballs. As they bounce and explode, they cause damage one, two, three times. It'll call also proc lucky hit one, two, three times. Illuminator also gives you primary resource restore, ranks to your fireball, your critical strike chance can go all the way up to 12. I'd love to get critical strike chance at 12, that's where the big one is. And for this one, the aspect, you want the lowest number possible because when it explodes, it deals only 25% less damage as opposed to 35% less damage. T-Bolts will, uh, look, your resource is gonna be okay on this. T-Bolts is just there to top it up, plus you get the 40X multiplicative damage when you're unstoppable we have our teleport and we have our flame shield which makes us unstoppable in the rotation you can't say no to something like that plus the damage up the top that you see 21.8 that works out to be a multiplicative damage in the long run down the track when you're looking at things as well which is great as soon as heirloom gets you more critical strike chance and really this gives you everything you want out of a pair of boots you get movement speed you get movement speed after killing an elite you get critical strike damage you get mana cost reduction i'd love this to be at 10 it's not so be it, we just keep looking for better SUs, we'll get there eventually. Now, so that you can have some things on here with some extra damage, you can't really use Oculus, you can't really use Staff of Endless Rage. I mean, Staff of Endless Rage will work if you've got it, but you really need some extra aspects on here and you really need a couple of extra things, which is why I've gone Wand and Focus. This also allows me on my focus to have things like Critical Strike Chance, Resource Generation and Cooldown Reduction, which is really great. And also the S's Ferocity Key Passive, which just gets my attack speed through the roof uh, once it procs both of the S's Ferocity Key Passives. On my wand, uh, decent. There are a couple of other. There's one other thing I'd love to find in here, which is core skill damage. I'd swap out the all stats or the intelligence for core skill damage, but that's the three you want. Mastery for your Meteor, critical strike damage because we're a crit build, and then you want core skill damage if you can find it. We're using Conceited because 25% multiplicative when you have a barrier. You've always got a barrier because the barrier comes when you use a cooldown. Teleport's a cooldown, Meteor's a cooldown, Lightning Spear's a cooldown, Ice Blades is a cooldown, Flame Shield is a cooldown, everything's a cooldown. It's phenomenal to use. Uh, on your focus, you want Ancient Flame, the SS Ferocity, we just spoke about that. What you're looking for is Crit Strike Chance, Resource Gen, Cooldown Reduction. Ideally, if you can get Lucky Hit, it would be pretty good on this as well because we work off a lot of Lucky Hit procs and you'll see why on the rings in a minute. But the Lucky Hit will make sure more meteors are falling when you're just using your Fireball and spamming out like no tomorrow. Tal Rashes because Tal Rashes. Finally, after three seasons, I found one with a 15X. This is phenomenal, but Tal Rashes... Just use Tal Rashes. Now, the other ring. People are using normal rings, people are using Starless Skies, people are using all of these other things. Starless Skies is kind of the best in slot because everything works, but the one thing that you will not beat is the damage you get out of X-Files. Um, let me go through the amulet, just tell you the last little bit, and then I'll, I'm gonna take you to the training grounds as I talk because X-Files is phenomenal. These explosions go for millions. And if I take X-Files off, it will never hit those millions. So um, we're gonna go to the training ground quickly because I do wanna show you that. And for my amulet, you saw that already. I've got Melted Heart on there. That makes me a little bit more tanky. I just like that, it's pretty cool. But more so than that, you don't need Melted Heart. You don't need the Uber Uniques, none of them. Um, you can't really use Shaco or any of the helmets because Staff or Coronet is what gives you everything that you need. Um, you don't really wanna be using uh, a Havarian, you don't really need Doombringer. There's nothing else really that would work that well. Starless Skies, yes, uh, it is technically best in slot because of all the stats that it gives you, but it will not give you what x Files gives you. And that's the slight difference in this build compared to other people's builds. So what I'm gonna do here just quickly is I'm going to do multiple training dummies. We're gonna have them come out. We're also gonna make them bosses just so they're a little bit more tanky and a little bit harder to beat. Now, I'm going to first take this ring off you see it sitting at the end, and then we shoot out everything, we shoot out all that stuff. You can see hundreds of thousands, 148, 160s, 120s, the occasional 200 that pops up because the meteors are falling, everything is all good. If we put on x 
and then we go in and let x files do its explosions with lucky hit you are going to notice that when these drop you will see pops that come out that are absolutely huge um if you want to pause the screen as it's popping and as it's coming down i'm trying to look to see if i can find one we are teleporting we're just dumping around there's a there was a 3.4 i think that was um a couple of hundred thousands again a couple of hundred thousands again you're gonna see them pop occasionally there's some big ones that just come out of here. it's really hard to read this um, if any of you want to slow the video down and just have a look, you'll start to see there was a 2.5, 2.2 million there that you just saw in the middle of the screen. There are some massive millions that pop out of this, and it is phenomenal. 1.7 million just popped down the bottom there. Um, you're not going to see damage like that come with any... 1.1 million just popped out there. You're not going to see damage from anything else other than X-Files that comes like that. And those damages, when you get to bosses, especially Uber bosses, you see it pop. You see their energy drain. It is absolutely phenomenal um center shot construct we'll go through this real quick because it's always the same stuff this is just the best way to do it flash of adrenaline duration to make it longer tactical to make a restart quick up and initiative and then tempest with arcing so it hits more people resource so you get resource and then efficiency support as well you can use anything else for initiative and efficient uh, initiative and efficiency use anything else that you want really you can use fortify you can use damage reduction you can use all the other stuff it doesn't really matter that's just these are just the best ways to be able to make it work um, you'll also notice my center shell here is popping 40s, 50s, 60s, 95 there in damage. A couple of hundred thousands pop out here and there as well. So it does some decent damage. Uh, next, let's pop over to the skill tree and just have a quick look. Uh, two points into Firebolt. You will use this because we're using Firebolt and Meteor as our two enchantments. You'll see down here. So two points into Firebolt. We do actually use it now. The burning damage procs x -Files, and it also procs a whole bunch of stuff on the Paragon board. Max out your... Fireball, take it all the way through to greater so that you, all the burning damage of a flood, your fireball deals extra damage. We're not using devastation or elemental dominance because it's not going to give us what we need. There's other stuff that we want further down. One in flame shield, nothing else. That's your emergency button. One in teleport, nothing else. That's an emergency button. Three into glass cannon because we're tanky enough to do it and 18x is phenomenal damage. One into achievement because of the refresh just to be able to refresh one of the two there, which is great. Then we come down, take your lucky hit, obviously, Ice Blades, and we take it through to Summoned, so that 20% of the Ice Blades cooldown reduction is applied to other skills. This will make your Meteor work really, really fast. Lightning Spear, because it makes things vulnerable, we get to hit harder. And because we've got Lightning Spear and Ice Blades out there, we get 3x increased damage with each Conjuration. We've got two of them out there, so that's 6x in the Conjuration, so it's a 6x... Um, 6x addition. You can also take this out if you want to, and you can just pop it down here into warmth, which gives you a healing, um, which helps out a lot if you're just running T100 volts. The 6x isn't going to make a huge difference, but on bosses, you'll notice it. Your, new, your normal stuff, one into align the elements, three into mana shield, which is going to give you damage reduction, and here's your protection, which is when you use a cooldown, you get a barrier. This is why you want your maximum life to be as high as possible. So we get into that with the Paragon board. We make our maximum life go up really high. I'm just going to walk away from this so it stops popping. Uh, and then from there we go down and we take max out into Meteor, take it all the way to Wizards. Everyone does Meteor with Wizards. We max out all the passives. Why? Because we're a fire build. That's all the best passives. We get more damage, more damage, and a chance to immobilize, which gives us more damage on Devouring Blaze. We then come down and take one into Permafrost, one into Hallfrost to give us the three into Frigid Breeze. What this does is allow our Ice Blades to also, when it hits vulnerable energies, give us a chance to generate a bit more mana back, which is really, really good. One into Fiery Surge, which really doesn't matter. One into Pyre, really doesn't matter. The only reason is for Warmth. You hit Warmth, it will help you heal up. It's actually a lot better than it looks. I've had it off for a little while because all I'm doing is just trying to get a bit of extra damage when I was versing Lilith to take her out. And down the bottom, obviously, it's just Ferocity. That doesn't need to be explained. That also works with the aspect that we've got on our focus. So, into the Paragon board. Now, I'm going to take a quick browse so you can see it over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. I've stolen a thousand Paragon boards. I've worked with a thousand Paragon boards. I reworked them a little bit. I added stuff. I took stuff away. I've tried to work it in a thousand different ways. And the reason is that no one has taken it up to be full resistances. This has got full resistances by taking a couple of things away from some of them. Uh, and then I've worked in eight Paragon boards uh, with a little bit of help. I can't remember the name of the two people. RNG Gaming was one. Um, he had seven, so I sort of used that to work my way around to see what sort of glitch he was using and move that around. And then there was another one. I don't remember exactly who it was. They had 
eight, I'm pretty sure, with one or two different glyphs. So I've used different glyphs in this uh, to put it to where it is. So in our first board, we put uh, control. That's going to give us our crowd control, and it's also going to give us uh, chilled and frozen enemy. So that's really great. Going into the second board, sorry, the second board here is burning instinct. So second board, we do burning instinct, and we throw in the destruction. Um, then we come up through here, we just take this little one here for the damage reduction from elite, which is really helpful. Third board, you go up. Just remember this, guys. Third board, you go up. So third board here, we're going to use the Enchantment Master. All we do is flick around here so that we can get the non fizz damage. In Enchantment Master, we put our Elementalist, which then just buffs these up so you get more non fizz damage and you get more resistance to elements. Um, and then we've taken the extra little bits down here so that we can tap our elements out. Fourth board, we're going to come back down one and we're going to come out and across here and just quickly go in and squeeze in. Sorry, this is the Elemental Summoner. Go in, quickly squeeze in your Reinforce board uh, with the 125 bonus. The 125 bonus is for the extra resistance. Again, that's the extra resistance that's going to help us top up as well. So that's your fourth board. Then we come back around like this and we go into Frigid Fate. Frigid Fate, we then use Enchanter. Uh, Enchanter gives you non fierce damage. That's to try and lift Frigid Fate all the way up. I have tried to max this to 30 and I can get it there, but I lose things on the way. Like I lose out little things um, that I really, really need, like the resistances. I really want that extra board. Like we don't really need the cold resistance here, but the non fierce damage is great for Frigid Fate. That's why we're doing it. Um, 27 is pretty damn good. We're only losing 3x multiplicative here. We can actually make that up just by throwing a couple of points into Conjuration. Uh, we then go up to the next board, which is Ceaseless Conduit. We throw in our exploit here for the vulnerable damage. We come around and we go into the next board, which is Searing Heat. We don't get anything here except for going straight through the glyph, putting Territorial for close targets and for the damage reduction because it really does help. Um, you'll notice I haven't really taken anything else here. We're just trying to squeeze out the decks to turn this on and get it going. And then the very last board we flick into is Static Surge. And in Static Surge, we use our Flame Feeder, which gives us... Uh, more damage to burning enemies and more damage to burning enemies. So we just do more damage to burning enemies. Everything is burning because of the way that we use our two enchantments. Again, we're using Fire Bolt, uh, the basic skill, and we are using Meteor to proc. That's the build, that's the way it was working and everything else that goes with it. Guys, this is just an incredible build. It's so much fun to play. You just saw it in a T100 and saw what it could do in a T100. Uh, that it was in a vault, it just annihilates absolutely everything. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal build, and so much fun when you're throwing out fireballs and you just see meteors come down and start annihilating everyone on there. Um, if you're interested just in the normal stuff, obviously it's a level 100 build, so being able to run out here and just annihilate anything in the world works. You don't even need to start throwing things out. All you do is throw out your fireball and things are going to just start popping. Um, we're going to run with our horse now for a second because we want to come down here. There's a whole bunch of bad guys. There's no more bad guys. Now, you'll notice I'm not even touching Meteor. And they're just dropping. Get your lucky hit up high enough. Just make sure you're looking around for some lucky hit. And your Meteors will just start dropping. You just aim your fireball. Pop, run, pop, run, pop those. There we go. Bang. It's just fun. It's just fun. It's absolutely great to see big fiery rocks from the sky just come in and take out absolutely everything in front of you. And even when you're in a little group like this, if you throw on uh, your flame shield, um, don't press the wrong button and throw your meteor. I wanted to show you something else there. Um, but if you throw on your flame shield, or you get a bit of uh, you know a bit of stuff from the back here. You can see that our Seneschal construct goes in. He starts to attack. He can only really take out one thing at a time, and he, he does a bit of damage. You can see it just popping and things going vulnerable and all this other sort of stuff. Um, but. That's not me touching anything, that was just me putting on flame shield and things blowing up. Lightning spear, ice blade, pop them out, start destroying stuff, run, pop, run, pop, and nothing's really going to hurt you. Great for farming hell tides, by the way, because you can just pop this in front of you, kill everything in front of you, and then just run through the hell tide as if there was nothing in the hell tide. You can just imagine as this goes through, look at this, Meteor's come falling down. Absolutely love this build, guys. Absolutely love this build. Um, Video is being uploaded. I'm right in the middle of the process of updating everything on Mobilytics for you guys, so you can see all the build and everything on Mobilytics. Any questions, anything that you want to know, uh, anything you'd like me to add, anything you want to ask, by all means, please comment, please like, please share. Uh, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out because we want to do this more often. And the more you that subscribe and the more you that start to follow us and the more you that start ticking away at those little YouTube things, the more we can start putting more videos out 
because it's so much fun, especially when you're doing builds like this. There's not a lot of people that do them. That's our fireball build. I've been sabotaged. This is DPS HQ. Really great to hear from you all, and I hope you guys all have a great afternoon. I will catch you all around on the next one.